Hi, I'm Diane Christensen, your master teacher for kids and teenagers. And today we have decided to address the wide shot versus the close up. And you're probably asking, what is that? And what I'd like to do is simplify that for you and make sure you know how important it is when you do start to work on camera. A lot of young actors that ask me that question haven't had a lot of experience on camera. And the only way to really solve that problem is to work. And you say, well, how do I do that without training? Um, while you're training, I encourage my students to uh, audition for student films. Uh, and in LA, uh, student films are quite respected because you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing student films at places like UCLA and, and USC and uh, Chapman and CalArts and all those great schools that are highly respected in the industry. But prior to that, every single town. In, in America does student films at the colleges and I encourage you to, to do that and that is where you will get your experience on camera. So submit your photo and resume to your local colleges that shoot student films, anybody that has a film department. So back to the wide shot versus the close-up. Um, generally this is asked, asked by beginners so I want to simplify that for you. The wide shot obviously is a shot that establishes uh, a general feeling for a character or a place. Um, there's, there are many different ways to describe the, um, the wide shot and I'm going to give you examples from film and television shows that you're probably very familiar with and explain them a little bit more in depth. The close-up actually breaks down into several different categories. The close-up is um, mostly just your face. Uh, the extreme close-up usually is between the chin and the hairline. And an even tighter version of a close-up is called the choker shot. And the choker shot, sounds scary, um, <laughs> it is kind of, is, is between the eyebrows and the lips. So it's really tight. And that usually is used to establish a feeling or an emotion and obviously that's when the actor needs to bring the juice. That's where your training comes in handy and your techniques come in handy and your eye positions for the camera come in very handy. What's an eye position? Well, it's pretty simple. There are three eye positions that are used for the camera. Eye position one is where you make eye contact with the other actor. Whether the actor is standing next to the camera or next to you, you will make eye contact with them. That's position one for the eyes. Position two is where you glance off to the side to think. And you'll see people like Tom Cruise using that often. Um, Julia Roberts uses it a lot. Uh, it's used very, very often in a cold read as well. Just to glance off to look as though you're thinking of something for the first time. Um, the third shot for the camera is where you glance down when referring to the self. Usually when a person talks about themselves, they tend to glance down and look at themselves to gather their thoughts. Those are so simple and yet they help actors so much the first few times they're on camera. So remember eye position number one, making eye contact with the other actor. Two, glancing off to the side to think, um, either side. And number three is glancing down to refer to the self. Those are going to help you so much in your close-ups especially. Um, so now I want to give a few examples of the wide shot and I want you to take note in the shots that I'm about to, to show you how you get a real feel for the character. Um, we have our first shot from the TV show Entourage, one of my favorites, lots of eye candy. <laughs> um, and you'll see, you'll see Ari Gold with his cell phone in hand and the way he's walking and what he's wearing, uh, who's super agent, right? You can tell who the star is in the center, Adrian Grenier. Um, you can definitely tell who his sidekicks are, who his agent manager are, and where they're placed establishes a lot about that team. And I chose that specifically so you see that. And you'll see some other shots today that, especially from Mean Girls, that give us a general feel for the character and where they are and what's going on in the wide shot. So we're going to start by looking at some of those and then we're going to show you some close-ups. So take note. First I'd like to talk about the close-up shot. The close-up is a certain feature or part of the subject that takes up most of the frame. As you'll see here, Leonardo DiCaprio. What an intense guy, huh? And a close-up usually means a close-up of 
their face. And close-ups are obviously useful for showing detail, and they can also be used as a cut-in. They cut in shots from Master Shot. A close-up is also used to emphasize an emotional state, and that's pretty much where the actor really needs to deliver the juice of the, the role. Um, this is where you save the goodies for the close-up. Here's my student Spencer Daniels in Benjamin Button with Kate Blanchett. Well, this is more of a mid-shot, actually. This is a bit of a mid-shot. And then we go to an example of one of my students, Haley Steinfeld, in a wide shot. And this is more appropriate for delivering facts and general information. A close-up exaggerates facial expressions, um, and the wide shot delivers the facts. You can pretty much tell from this shot what's going on and what these characters are about. So that's another general wide shot. Here is a perfect example of establishing where the characters are and who the characters are from Entourage. We've got, we've got the Entourage right here, and you can tell on, on the far right, Ari Stone is the you know mega agent, the high-powered agent. He's got his phone in hand. They're on the lot. Then the manager, of course, is always between the, the star and the, the agent, looking out for the star. And then, of course, his sidekicks on the left. Um, and then I want to show you what a choker shot is. This is where the viewer is drawn into the subject's personal space and shares their feelings. Um, and this is kind of a variation of the choker shot, or choker shot, which is typically framed on the subject's face from above the eyebrows and below the mouth. We call that a choker shot. Here's a close-up, um, which is shot from over the shoulder of one actor, and it's usually from above the person's neck or the nape of the neck to just slightly above the forehead and the top of the head. And if you get in closer so that the actor's head fills most of the frame, you have a tight close-up. This shot of Daniel Day-Lewis goes in even tighter to show a person's eyes or mouth and gives you an extreme close-up. Close-ups really cre create a sense of intimacy and the feeling that you're involved in the scene. They also reveal a lot of emotion in the eyes, as you see here on Mad Men. Um, lots of emotion there. That's what you save your emotion for, guys, the, the close-up. They reveal emotion in the eyes and the hint sometimes of a smirk or a smile is shown here um, on Meryl Streep in Devil Wears Prada. It shows a really close-up and a tight close-up. And the director often chooses a close-up to emphasize the intensity of a scene, as you've seen in the last two shots. The emotional or sensitive dialogue is often shot in a, in a tight close-up to emphasize the importance of what's being said. So obviously, there's a lot going on here with Harry and Hermione, internally especially. Um, again, Black Swan, we've got Natalie Portman in her award-winning Academy Award-winning role. Um, in a close-up looking at her alter ego in the mirror with a lot of emotion, one being in control, one being out of control. We get to be inside of her, her soul in a shot like this. And then let's talk about the wide shot a little bit more. This reveals where the scene's taking place. Whenever you see a wide shot, you want to generalize your character, maybe make it a little bit more pronounced. Um, again, this shot shows where the scene's taking place in the school hallway, and it's also referred to the long shot or a master shot. A wide shot hel helps you, helps the orient the audience, and a wide shot also gives the actors room to move within a shot. Uh, this is where we get to show our body language and what our body's telling us about the character without the camera having to follow you. Median shots and close-ups are often cut into a wide shot like this for variation. Uh, these are all establishing shots. Here on Glee, you can definitely feel the emotion in the entire room. So this establishing shot is a type of wide shot that can establish, you know, the classroom, a building, before the camera cuts to an interior close-up. Of course, this is inside the school. Um, this shows Glee in TV format close to the dimensions of a square. And then there's a wide shot, like this shot from Twilight, in a wider theatrical format that's more oblong and rectangular in frame size. So again, some incredible examples of close-ups. This really tells you a lot about his character. He's in control. Here she is. She's kind of daydreaming and wistful and longing for something. You really get that from the close-ups. 
<laughs> no doubt about what we're going for here with Jack in The Shining. Absolute evil and, and insanity. <laughs> and here, again, an establishing wide shot. This is probably a still of all the characters in a, in a pertinent moment in this particular episode of Harry Potter. And there you have it. Another close-up. Don't know if I'd want to open the door for this guy. And of course, our beloved Rachel from Glee. Always the, always the diva, always the star, always in control. So there you have it. Not quite as difficult as you thought it was, right? It's just that when you get onto set, the first few times you shoot, it is a little bit intimidating. So I encourage you to breathe, do your warm-ups, make sure you're relaxed, relaxation's everything, and use the tips that you've seen here today. So enjoy your shoots, and I hope that you'll come back to this video when you need to, dis to discover the details that we covered in the wide shot versus the close-up. We'll see you next time. Thanks.